The Wood Whisperer is sponsored by Powermatic and Typebond. This past summer, I had the honor of teaching a class at the Mark Adams School, and I decided to do a scaled down version of the gaming dining table. It'd be much more feasible in a five day class format. Well, the problem was I hadn't actually built the thing. So just a couple weeks before the class, I built what I considered to be a prototype and already had all the details worked out for the big one. Just had to make sure they made sense on a smaller version. So I filmed it as I was building that prototype and that's what we've got here for you. Now folks who wanna build this, the actual plans are in the guild and they are free for anyone who bought the gaming dining table series. So if you're interested in that, that's where you're going to want to go. Uh, but I also thought it'd be nice to make a shorter version of the video here so you could see this thing go together. Let's get to it. I'll start by milling up the leg stock. The coffee table legs are only two and a quarter inches thick compared to the three and a half inch thick legs on a dining table. Each leg will be glued up from two pieces. After the glue is dry, the legs are squared up and planed to two and a quarter square. Then I cut them to length at the table saw. Next, I'll mill up some stock for the rails. Here, I'm cutting a three quarter inch groove for the bottom panel. On the outside of the rail, we'll cut an accessory groove. First, I make a single kerf groove to remove some material and lessen the stress on my T-slot bit. I can then plow the T-slot all the way across. Back at the table saw, I carefully cut away the bottom section of the T-slot. Because I was trying to save as much time as possible, I used dominoes for the joinery. Now I could lay out the taper. Remember the two tapered faces are the ones that receive the joinery. The first taper is cut at the bandsaw. The off cut is then taped back on and the second cut is made. A lot of times I'll use a hand plane for cleanup, but when time is of the essence, I just use the jointer. I'll clean up the mill marks with a scraper round over the edges, and sand. Because I notched the corners of the bottom panel to fit around the legs on the dining table, I decided to try notching the leg instead on this coffee table build. Well, it turns out it's actually not a better way to do it. This method works just fine, but it's a lot of extra work. Notching the panel corners is just easier. I'll glue the two long rails to their respective legs to reduce the number of variables I have to deal with at this point. With a quick dry assembly, I can measure for the bottom panel and cut it out of a sheet of 3 quarter inch plywood. To match my notched legs, I dog ear the corners of my panel. If the dry fit looks good, you can proceed to the final glue up of the base. Next up, the top frame parts are cut to size. To cut the bridle joints, I used the bandsaw in the dining table series, but here I decided to try a tenoning jig. Turns out this wasn't a great idea. Because the table saw blade is thicker than a bandsaw blade, the wide cut allows for small amounts of movement in the joint. So when I go to make the second cut, the wood may have moved one way or the other, which results in a bad fit and an inconsistent gap. So my suggestion is to just use the bandsaw. As you can see here, I did the rest of my joints using the bandsaw method, which requires chisel cleanup after the fact. 
the male side of the joint is cut as one large tenon, so be sure to scribe the shoulder line beforehand and you'll get a nice clean cut. After finessing and fitting, the frame can be glued together. Not only do we want pressure in both directions to close up the shoulders, we also want to clamp each corner to bring the bridle joints together. With the top frame on the base, we can measure and cut the filler strips. We'll need two long strips and two short strips. The long strip is glued on first, flush with the inside edge of the frame, and extending about an eighth of an inch on each side into the short rail area. The short filler strip is then cut to fit in the space between the long rails. When the glue dries, the frame should drop right into place. To make room for our tabletop pieces, we'll cut a rabbit on the inside of the top frame. The router leaves rounded corners, so let's chop them square with a chisel. Only after the bulk is removed can we go back and cut right on the line by chopping down. For the top, I'm going to cut individual boards. They'll be cut for a snug fit along the grain, but from side to side, we'll need to experiment a bit for a perfect fit. When you butt them up side by side, they should hang over quite a bit on the frame. At the table saw, I'll cut rabbits in the edges to create shiplap joints. Now back at the table, we can do a test fit again. If it's too tight, we can cut the boards down slightly and then recut the rabbits. Once they're nice and snug, I'll take a few passes with my jack plane on each rabbited edge of each board. This will hopefully provide enough slack for wood movement, considering the orientation of the grain is definitely not doing us any favors. Now we can glue the top in place. Just a bead of glue on the filler strips will do the trick. For the coffee table, I'm including a simple finger hole. This can be carved by hand or done very quickly at the spindle sander by first sanding a semicircle and then tilting the board up at a sharp angle to give it a cool shape and it makes more room for the fingers. All sides of the top pieces receive a light round over. Now very quickly, I want to show you the prototype accessory that I created here. Now, uh, at the stage that we're in with our kids, we don't really make a whole lot of use of these, so that's why I never got further than just this proof of concept that I have here. So we give you the dimensions in the plan so you could make this. You basically have to have a roundover bit to create this little edge here. You can use a dado stack or a router bit to create the dado. And you just want to make sure that you get this material that's left over to the right dimension. So it will take a little bit of experimentation to get a good fit so it pops in there. You also want to relieve a little bit of material from this edge right here. You could just use your block plane for that and don't remove any more than you need to. That is what's going to allow us to essentially tip this up to pull it out. For the finish, I'll be using Osmo Pollux. This is a hard wax oil that I wanted to experiment with. It's not quite as protective as something like a wiping varnish, but it does a pretty decent job. I paint the finish on and then come back with either a paper towel or a white Scotch-Brite pad to buff it into the grain. Once dry, I'll sand the first coat with 320 grit and then apply a second coat the same way as the first. So remember, if you're interested in building this, you might want the plans. We've got a SketchUp and PDF in the guild, but you have to buy the gaming dining table to get it. And the video that I included in there is just a little bit more detailed, but it's still an overview like this. Most of the deep construction details you'll find in the gaming dining table series. All right, so check that out over at the guild. Thanks for watching. There he is!
course, everything is just generally smaller. 